Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Lee Warren, who is in London, Lee, correct? That's correct, South London. South That's London. Bit of London. <laughs> Excellent. And yeah, Lee is a professional speaker and uh, it's also a first for Sales Pop because he also was a... Uh, profession magician for a long time as well so we've we've had a number of people on the show from different professions we haven't had a magician before um <laughs> so um lee has written a number of books how to persuade anyone to do anything and grown-ups don't use powerpoint and what lee talks a lot about is the art of persuasion and i know for all the sales people listening in today persuasion is a big thing so again lee warren welcome um so tell me uh, tell me your philosophy when it comes to persuasion. Um, well, there's a, there's a very long answer and a very short answer. Um, the, the, the very short answer is that uh, um, persuasion is, is a very ethical thing, right? I think a lot of people think persuade, being persuasive is quite a Machiavellian thing. You know, they think it's about convincing people to do stuff they wouldn't do. Um, but actually, persuasion is all about getting emotional engagement with with people. Um, so if if someone feels like, you know, what you're saying to them or what you're presenting to them or what you're pitching to them, if they feel like this is interesting to them or this is fun or this is worth their time or this is going to make them look good in front of someone else or this is going to make them money um, or any any sort of positive emotion, then then you're a more persuasive person. Um, that, 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 that's the short answer. That's my fundamental um, uh, view of persuasion. Uh, and so how can people learn to be more persuasive, um, you know, in their, are there some things that they can do to actually set themselves up to be a, a more persuasive in their engagements with other people? Oh, yeah, uh, some fairly simple things straight away, actually. And they, and they aren't, they're so simple, they almost shouldn't need saying out loud. But, but I find with a, a lot of the work I do, they do need saying. Mm -hmm. So the first one is you, you, you've got to listen and understand other people's worlds more. Um, uh, I, I, I would say hand on heart with every client I've ever had and myself. Um, most of us are very, very good, especially in sales. We're really good at talking about what's interesting to us. We're often very good at the spiel. Um, and, uh, you know, but nobody wants to be sold to, uh, uh, really. Um, people will push back against that. So learning how to really listen to people, um, learning how to really understand what people's real needs are and what's really on their mind at the moment you're coming into contact with them. Um, those are two very simple things. But they're a bit like chess, I think. You can, you can learn to do those things in a minute and then it takes a lifetime to, to become good at them. I'll tell you one other fairly simple thing people can do is is really restructure how they think about language. When you, when you meet people mm -hmm. who are genuinely really persuasive, very often what you'll find is they talk in either very visual language, so they'll often be using images, so they'll say things like, imagine if, dot, 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 or wouldn't it be great if we could, right. dot, dot, dot. They'll often talk very visually. Um, and the other thing is they're very, very good, and I think they do this very honestly, very ethically. I don't think they're being manipulative, but they're very good at looking at what the future could be like for all of us to, together. They they really do want everyone to have a, a solution or, or everyone to win from whatever they're proposing. They're, they're sort of like the opposite of the you know the sleazy car salesperson. Yeah, no, I, I, I love those ideas. Uh, let me go, just go back to listen for a moment, okay? Because I think this is becoming an increasing problem of not just listening, but being present, right? Because we're, we've become so accustomed to be distracted and we say, oh, you know, we're so busy nowadays when reality is, you know, we're so distracted nowadays. And I yeah. think it's coming harder and harder for people to be present when they're talking to somebody. So be present and listen. I, I think those are challenging things. What, what do you think people can do to actually... Um, maybe mitigate from mitigate against um, you know these distractions and not being present. Well, I, I think there's there's a couple of things. So one is a, is a mindset shift, and I think you you I said said that carefully. Um, <laughs> you, I think there's a, <laughs> I, you know, as a professional speaker, I'm always terrified of getting things wrong on stage. You know, um, uh, but I, I think there is there is a shift in in a mindset, which is you have to genuinely believe that what other people have got to say and what's in other people's minds is is as valuable as what's in your own mind. Mm. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of us we're not really listening to people. We're just waiting waiting for our turn to speak. Um, so, so I think that you, you've got to genuinely view other, other people's worlds as, as, as being as interesting as your own. 
But then in practical terms, I think some of it's a little bit about practice, actually. Um, I mean, as you were asking the question, I was thinking of my own experience as a magician. And, and a lot of people think magic is all about, you know, the quickness of the hands. Mm -hmm. But actually, that's the easy bit of being a magician. You, ju you just learn that. Um, the hard stuff is really being present and understanding what's happening. So if I'm doing a magic trick, I've got to practice what's going on in my hands enough that I can forget about that eventually, right. because my awareness has to be, oh, are the canapes going to come and interrupt what I'm doing? Is somebody trying to see behind me? Um, <laughs> is somebody about to make a funny joke that's going to ruin my carefully prepared <laughs> script? You know, I've got to be really aware of all those things, but I wouldn't be able to be if I hadn't practiced the technical stuff. So I think um, certainly a lot of people in sales should do a lot more role play. I think they should do a lot more getting their pitch down so that all of that stuff almost becomes sub not subconscious unconsciously um uh, uh, worked out so they don't really need to think about that they can actually have more attention free for what's going on around them but does that answer your question yeah no it, it, it does absolutely and i think there's an and i think you're 100 percent correct that says people need to do more role playing and more practice i think um if a lot of us are, are honest we probably practice our hobbies more than we practice the thing that puts bread on the table right um, yes uh, and I also think this, here's an interesting exercise that I think some people should do and it might be really surprising uh, is, you know, maybe do it with your sales manager or somebody, but with somebody else is actually have a conversation. But instead of answering the other person immediately, you have to actually repeat back what they said and show that you understand understood exactly what they said. And you might be surprised how many people fail, <laughs> fail that exercise. I, I think that's a, that's a brilliant exercise, actually. It reminds me that there was a very famous acting tutor called uh, Sanford Meisner, and mm -hmm. um, and he had exactly an acting exercise like that, which is where in pairs you'd say the same phrase to each other about sort of 50 times, and you end up in this weird mental space where you really do start listening to everything except the words being used. Right. You know, you see everything about someone's body language. Uh, I think that's great. I think the other thing about um, the other big benefit of role play, and this is something that took me a little while to learn because I, I quite often get clients to do this, is um, that when you're doing the role play, actually, it's not the person playing the role of the salesperson who benefits alone. It's the person pretending to be the buyer or the client because they suddenly see their own behavior. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they hear a salesperson pitching to them and they think, oh, my God, that's, you know, that's ridiculous. Why would I ever do that? So they learn something even if they're not so active in the role play. Yeah, I, I agree with that because I think often for some reason um, we forget that we're consumers and customers ourselves, like when we're in selling situations and then we suddenly start behaving differently or expecting the other person to behave differently than we would in that situation. Um, so let's talk a little bit about language because I like that idea of what you said about uh, people using a visual language, a different language. I don't think we pay enough attention to what we say and how we say it. Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Um, and I think there's a, I mean, there's a couple of caveats to that or a couple of pitfalls, which is I think sometimes some people get too obsessed with their language and they sort of go on weird training courses <laughs> and they leave sounding like robots for a week. And, you know, that, that never works or that sort of quirky stuff. Well, so in terms of language, in terms of being authentic and having a really sort of bulletproof way of doing it, I, I think um, one really great thing is to be obsessed with value. And to really focus on the, the the value that your product or service brings, rather than the thing itself. And a lot of us get too we get too wrapped up in you know all the processes and systems and and so on. Um, and I mean, a sales conversation really, and certainly a persuasive sales conversation, is about an exchange of value. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've got some value to give you. You've got some value to give me. How can we as adults exchange that? Um, and one one technique I use a lot, and it's a great thing, is is to fill in the second half of a sentence, which is. Um, uh something like at the heart of what i do is a simple idea dot 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 or at the heart of our service is a simple idea dot mm -hmm. dot dot and what that gets you to do is it gets you to really focus really precisely on on the value um that you bring and that i think organically and naturally gets you to use a, a better kind of language a more a language that matters more to, to clients and to the people we're selling to um and a really fun example i i, I love to use when i was a full-time magician wedding couples would always say to me what kind of tricks are you going to do at our wedding mm. and and if you think about that really in, in a sales context there that's a process question they're not really asking that question because they wouldn't understand the answer yeah, yeah they're really asking you know can we trust you with the, with the most important day of our lives that's really what they're saying so i could say well i do card tricks and coin tricks and mind reading tricks but but that doesn't 
do anything about trust and value. Mm -hmm. Or I could say instead, well, at the, at the heart of my magic is a simple idea. Um, I'll make your wedding much better than your sister's was. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's, a, that's a bit tongue in cheek. I've never said that to a wedding couple, but, but you get the idea. There's, it's fun, but there's real value in that. And, 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 and buyers, you know, wedding couples would respond to that straight away. They'd laugh and they'd, they'd, they'd get the joke, but they'd also see the value. Who doesn't want the best wedding that, you know, anybody's ever had? Yeah, no, exactly. And I think I think you touched on a great point there. And um, there's a there's a there's a person, Lisa Magnuson, who does um, presentations training and, and she has a, this great idea. And I think it's perfect uh, um, that a lot of people start off a, or a presentation or a pitch and they start to talk about the steps. Right. Um, how instead of she says, like, if you're going on a vacation to Hawaii, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about lying on the beach in Hawaii. You're not thinking about well, I got to get the Uber to the station, then I got to get <laughs> yeah, the airplane, yeah. then I got. Now you have to go through those steps, but you got to start with the the vision, and just like you said there, with the um, I'm going to make this the best wedding, whatever. That's what they want to hear. You know, they don't want to hear immediately the steps you're going to use to get there, right? Oh, I, I couldn't agree more, and that actually speaks to what we talked about at the beginning of this this um, uh, chat, which is about getting the emotional engagement first. You're not going to get emotional engagement with people, or it's really hard to, if you start talking about processes and steps. Um, and I H A P I E, and that just stands for hearts and minds. So that's the order in which you put your information. Um, can I get an emotional engagement first, followed by the mind stuff, the content and data? And then PI, P-I-E, just stands for pictures. Could you use loads of pictures, loads of visual language? I is for interest. You know, what's the most interesting thing to the people you're communicating with rather than to you? And then E is enthusiasm. You know, you've, you've got to believe your own stuff. and you've got to, mm -hmm. You're the first person you've got to persuade if you're going to be a, a great salesperson, I think. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally because I don't. I don't think number one. I mean, you can't be authentic um, if you really don't believe in what you're selling, um, and I think that comes across. Um, and I like the idea of what you said about the win-win. You know, the future state is a win-win situation. Like, and I think that's become increasingly more important because you have savvy buyers, and and as you say, you know, people don't want the. They don't want to feel like they're being sold to but they want they want to feel like you're invested in their success right and that's the thing that you've got to get across oh i i couldn't agree more 100 percent. and i think certainly i mean the digital revolution i mean it's it's, it's revel for the first time ever there's a lot of stuff in sales which goes really deep to you know who we are as human beings but and there's very little that's new but what is new i think for the first time ever is we we now live in a world where the buyer has at least as much information as a typical salesperson mm -hmm. and, and anything they don't know is, is just a google click away so you know when you think of 30 years ago if you walked up to buy something in a shop or a showroom or something you'd you'd really be asking the salesperson guide me through the information yeah. tell me the stuff that that doesn't happen anymore in b2b b2c i don't think in any arena people really they they know their stuff when they when they come to buy from us um and so they're really asking, OK, I know all the stuff, but now I need someone I can trust to make sense of that for me and to, and to guide me to actually finally part of my cash. And, and you're quite right. And it's a long term thing in a digital world. We can't we, no one can take cash off anybody and run away anymore. You know, we've all got Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other part of it, though, is, you know, the win win. I mean, it's also for the salesperson. And I think that if you're going to engage with a customer, um, it's an exchange. And if you both come up with the solution together and it's and you add value and all of that, you should expect it to be win win from your point of view, too. Oh, 100 percent. And it's win win in many ways. It's, it's win. It's, you, you win on that particular transaction. You win in terms of the long term relationship. And then you also potentially win in this total goldmine for all of us, which is in terms of the referrals and the mm -hmm. testimonials and the repeat business from people you've never met and, and would possibly never even meet with all the cold calling and prospecting in the world without those recommendations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think it's it's right at the heart of my, my business, that, 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 that thing of getting testimonials and referrals, definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, any other last um, things around persuasion? Because obviously, like when you were a professional magician, right, I mean, you're persuading people to some degree to almost to suspend... Um, suspend um belief or whatever and and just buy into what you're doing right so i mean what are the, yes. are there any techniques that came over from magic 
Yeah, there, there, there are. Um, and, and they're sort of, in a way, they're sort of boringly simple. Um, and, and But I think it's the simplicity of them that a lot of people miss. Um, I, I was talking to a personal trainer uh, earlier this week, actually, and I asked him what he thought the best exercise in a gym was. And he said the best exercise in the gym is what's called a farmer's walk, which is where you just pick up a heavy weight and you walk from one end of the gym to the other. And he says, but nobody ever does it because it's so simple. Everyone's looking for something complicated. And I mm. think it's similar in sales. So in terms of being a magician, it's definitely about trust. It's de and what all good magicians learn is, is within seconds of meeting people or within seconds of walking on stage, you have to get people liking you and trusting you. They don't know anything about you yet, um, but if you can get a laugh, if you can get a smile, if you can get a nod of recognition, that is the single most persuasive thing you can do because... Um, you know, as a magician, you're going to be asking people, give me your wedding ring, give me your wallet. You know, I'm going to set that fire to a £10 note. You've got to have a lot of trust there. And I, I think in terms of sales, bringing it back to, to, the, to the real world. So some of that's about how we personally relate to other people. But I think some of it's some really simple stuff about how do you dress? I mean, you know, is your dress, is your dress on brand? Do you look good? The, the number of salespeople I've seen who turn up looking a bit sweaty, you know, and then they sort of fumble around in a bag for an old knackered brochure. Um, and it's so easy to get that stuff right, but no, well, not nobody, but hardly anybody does it. So if you do do that, you you really stand out. So I think it's really, really simple. I suppose that, sorry, to sum it up quickly, if you only had 60 seconds with somebody, what would you do in those 60 seconds to, to, to win their trust mm -hmm. and then just behave like that all the time? Yeah, I, d I think that's a great idea. It's one of my, uh, it's one of my soap boxes as well, is that the idea is that you'll never be docked points for uh, looking too good, like being well-dressed or whatever. You won't get docked points for being overdressed, but you'll certainly get docked points for being underdressed and um, for being polite, grammatically correct, all those simple things, you know, that you'll, that people, a lot of people, unfortunately, because we live in this pseudo-casual culture today, they think that they can throw all of those out the window. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, and um, and and I do mean that thing about on brand, by the way, because mm -hmm. I think some you know some businesses brand is a t-shirt and jeans. That's sure. but they've got to be really good jeans and a really good t-shirt. You know, some businesses is, is suit and tie and, and and so on, or a really smart business uh, um, uh, uh, dress suit or something. Um, but so it, it is about the brand. I, I mean, a really good example I think is if, if you went to a tarot card reader something if you went to someone and she said uh, or he said um oh i haven't got my tarot cards today but i'm going to tell you about yourself anyway <laughs> yeah. you, you'd walk out you wouldn't pay yeah. the money now yeah. there's nothing i don't want to offend anybody but there's nothing <laughs> in the tarot cards that does anything yeah. but you expect that you know you want to see them in those mysterious images because it's all part of the trust and we're exactly like that with sales with our brochures our website the way we dress it it's the same ph phenomena in the mind that's fantastic. Listen, um, Lee, this has been a fascinating conversation. I know we could talk for a lot longer. Hey, before you go, um, two things. I'm going to get you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, but I've got to ask you, <laughs> who, who is your favorite magician growing up? Um, so my favorite magician that everyone listening to this would know, and probably even including the States, is um, uh, Darren Brown, of course, who's, who's taken the world by storm um, for the last 15 years or so. He, he is just one. I mean, he doesn't define himself entirely as a magician but he is just the most wonderful uh, thinker and performer and writer and artist he's sort of irritatingly talented so he's 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 the best that everyone listening to this would would know and if you've never seen him live go and see him it's a, it's a masterclass in how to hold and entertain and persuade an audience excellent mine's tommy cooper but there you go <laughs> I'm joking. So um, he was brilliant. He was brilliant as well. <laughs> um, so Lee, um, tell people a little bit more about yourself, your company, and how they can find out more about you. Well, my company is me. I mean, I'm the I'm the international headquarters of of my business, um, and uh, my my website is invisible-advantage.com. Uh, and um, and and I'm a, a, a primarily eighty percent of my work is as a speaker for conferences. So. Um, so, uh, so I suppose anyone who's got a sales conference or an internal sales meeting coming up where they um, need a speaker who's devilishly good looking and great fun uh, can, can, uh, <laughs> can get in touch uh, for sure. And then about 20% of what I do is, is workshops which come off the, 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 the speaking. So I'll sort of go to a conference and speak and then some of the people say, can you work with our sales team or our leadership team? Um, so, I, so I do that quite a lot. So that's, that's what I do and how people can get in touch. Yes, excellent. And if you have any difficult colleagues, you'll also make them disappear, right? So. 
<laughs> yes. Um, listen, this is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. It's been fantastic talking with uh, Lee Warren in London. Let's see you all again for another expert interview really soon. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.